Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. So we're doing this one question at a time. Here's question number seven. In the diagram below of triangle AED and line ABCD, AE, so AE is right here, is congruent to DE. So we have AE here congruent to DE here. Based on that, we, we know that this this entire triangle, triangle AED, is an isosceles triangle. So let's see what they're asking us. Which statement is always true? Because this is an isosceles triangle, we know that angle A is going to be equal to angle D. So we just want to look for something that says that. So, And if we go one by one, we'll see why the others don't look right to us, why the other answer choices don't look right. So if we look at choice one, it says EB is congruent to EC. So that looks right, but they don't give any information that tells us that that could be true. So that's not the answer. AC, so this over here, is congruent to DB. So again, that looks true, but there's nothing to tell us that it definitely is true. So that's not the right answer. And then we have choice three, angle EB. A is congruent to angle ECD. Again, that looks right, but we're not 100% sure. So that, that doesn't give us what we're looking for, those two angles to be congruent. So that's not it either. So by process of elimination, it must be choice four, but let's look at why angle EAC, so we get that angle A in there, is congruent to angle EDB. So yes, choice four gives us the answer we're looking for. And just to give you some background on why, um, this is based on the isosceles triangle theorem. So let's just write that out. And this tells us if two sides on a triangle are congruent, which they give us, then the angles opposite to these sides are also congruent. Which in this case is angle A to angle D. And that's our answer. On to question number eight. As shown in the diagram below, right triangle ABC has side lengths eight and 15. So we have right here, eight and then 15. If the triangle is continuously ro rotated about AC, so if it's rotated about here, the resulting figure will be. So let's just picture this in our mind. So let's imagine we're taking this triangle and like swinging it. So like imagine this is like a pole and we're taking a flag and we're like swinging it around for it to be on the other side. And it's in 3D, right? So this would be coming out and making a circular pattern. So I'll just draw, redraw it on the side over here. So it ends up looking like a cone, right? where the height is what they already gave us, where the height is eight, and it has a diameter of 30 and a radius of 15. So now we just need to look for that in the answer choices. So if you look at choice one, it actually gives us the right answer right away. It says a right cone, so this is a right cone because it has a right angle at it, in its core inside. A right cone with a radius of 15 and a height of eight. So we know that this is our answer choice one. Question number nine. In the diagram below, lines K and L intersects line M and N at points A, B, C, and D. Which statement is sufficient to prove A, B, C, D is a parallelogram? So this is a tricky question. There's a couple things that we want to be proving to prove this is a parallelogram. So, and we're gonna like have a little checklist on the side. So we wanna ask ourselves um, if lines K and L are parallel. So the thing about parallelograms is the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. So that's why we would want lines K and L to be parallel. And that's why we also want lines M and, L, M and N to be parallel. Another thing about parallelograms is that the opposite angles are congruent. So that means we'd want angles 2 and 7 to be congruent. So now let's go through each choice and see 
which would prove all the things on our checklist. So for choice one, we have angle one is congruent to angle three. So that's really, that's good information, but it's not enough to prove that this is a parallelogram. Um, showing angle one is congruent to angle three just shows us that line M is parallel to line N on our checklist. So not the answer. It doesn't give us any information about line L. So that's how we know that this doesn't make any sense. Angle four, let's see the next choice, choice two. Angle four is congruent to angle seven. So now we can see that lines K and L are parallel, but this just tells us nothing about line M. So it's missing information, so it's not enough. Now let's see choice three. This looks like it has more information. Maybe this will help us. Angle two is congruent to angle five. Okay, that looks good. That proves that lines K and L are, are parallel. So that's a check. Now angle five, is congruent to angle seven. So now we're involving the other lines. We have line M and line N are parallel. And look, our angle two is congruent to angle seven. That means opposite angles are congruent and this is gonna be the answer, choice three. So there's a lot of background information to remember parallelograms and transversals for this question. So just be sure that you remember the rules and that it hits every mark. That's kind of the secret to this question. So let's try question number 10. Which transformation does not always preserve distance? This should be a good one. Dilation, we know dilations, or should know, dilations don't always preserve distance. So now we just need to look for dilations and whenever we're involving dilations, we're multiplying. So if we look at these different transformations, we just wanna ask ourselves which one has a number that's being multiplied and that's in choice three only, which is our answer here. So if you're looking for more on this test, check out the playlist in the link below. And thanks for stopping by. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.